Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States and Mrs. Bush, accompanied by Senator and Mrs. Quayle. <laughs> Thank you all so very much. Thank you so very much. What a wonderful, please be seated. What a wonderful welcome back to Washington. There's so much I want to say, but uh, I'll keep it relatively brief. We're so moved that all of you would come out today, and I expect we've kept you waiting. But I have some thoughts I want to share about what's happened in the past 24 hours. And earlier, <laughs> earlier today, we went to a church service in Houston at the church that Barbara and I belonged to since in the early 60s, I believe 1962. And some of my children were confirmed there, our children, and Bar thoughts. <laughs> And Barbara taught Sunday school there, and I was a member of the, of the vestry, and we read from the Psalms today, gave thanks, sang some of the old songs, and the pastor prayed for a world of righteousness and kindness, of liberty and peace. And I guess that is probably the first moment when I realized the enormity of it all, and we forget that the whole world is watching. And how could it not have been impressed by the peaceful beginnings of what will be a transfer of power as the world's oldest, greatest democracy quietly moves on and shifts and moves on again. And many... Many leaders of the Western Alliance have very generously been communi communicating their goodwill and, and congratulations, and I assured them that I will do my level best to see that the United States does its part in keeping the alliance strong. And to our friends and allies in the world, the good policies of the last eight years will continue the closeness and the consultations will continue. And after eight years of strong leadership, calm stability, dramatic progress, we are open now to new progress and to new challenges. And to those who do not yet view themselves as our allies, well, we'll keep on trying. But do not indulge in any hopes that our resolve will be weakened. We're going to continue to stay strong because we truly love peace and we're willing to pay the price for it. You know, just before landing here at Andrews, I received a very thoughtful communication from General Secretary Gorbachev of the Soviet Union. And I conveyed to his ambassador my determination to keep this new important bilateral relationship 
moving forward. Governor Dukakis, in his gracious remarks last night, offered to work with us to build a better America. And we forget. But that's really what it's all about. And let me tell you what I intend to do to build a better America. Our country these days has a hunger for harmony. And I felt it at so many moments. I felt it strongly during the campaign. And so I'm going to do everything I can to have good and open and friendly relationships with the United States Congress. And I don't want us to talk at each other. I want us to talk to each other. And I've said during... And I said that I want a kinder and a gentler nation. And I think there's a hunger for that, too, in our country. There's so much to do to help make life better for all. And I want to say a few words about Dan Quayle. You, and yes, he has had a baptism by fire. <laughs> But steel is tougher, harder when it's been tempered by the flames. And we both know that we've got a lot of work to do. Sudden national fame can be tough, can be tough on your family. We all know that, all of us. But let me tell you about him. He's going to be one of the great vice presidents. You watch him closely, America, because you're going to respect what you see. And now we're going down to see the president in the White House, have a chance to discuss the future of the country. And any man is lucky to work with a good friend, but I must be the luckiest man in the world to have as my close friend one of the great heroes of the modern era, Ronald Wilson, <laughs> Wilson Reagan. He is. He is the living embodiment of the word patriot. No man ever loved his country more or served her better. The president and his great first lady will be a tough act to follow. I know it's autumn, getting on to late fall, but I have a sense of blooming, kind of sense of spring, and all these new beginnings and a wonderful new era, rich with possibilities and full of hope. It's good news, and I am very, very happy. Barbara and I are happy and blessed to be with you here today. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.